Ooh. All right. Uh, I don't know why you crack your knuckles. It's not one of those things. That's just what my hands do. Look. Oh, that's just you. Listen. I can do that with my ankle. <laughs> Look. You know, being an athlete, those things happen to you. Since you're such a great athlete and you have all of these injuries that yeah. you need to recover, we should probably get a little bit more in here, huh? All right. You yeah. just want to go right for it, huh? Well, uh, you know, I didn't just come here for the conversation. Whatever. Oh. That's what I thought you were here. I thought the present premise of the show was that your friends who are athletes don't have time. Yeah, but I felt like y'all still would want to talk to me, you know? <laughs> I give such good conversation. First things first, Rhonda. Mm -hmm. Okay. God damn, you're a tough woman. As a man who doesn't consider himself tough, being around you, it's making me question my level of toughness. <laughs> How many men are intimidated by you? I mean, I don't know. I've never done a count or anything like it's that. It's got to be a high level, though. Probably, you know, but um, as long as my husband's comfortable, I don't care. Do you feel like within your relationship, if something ever hit the fan, has it ever crossed your mind, and you say, you know what, I'll whoop your ass? Now, despite the fact that I believe that I could beat up anybody, okay, <laughs> he still is like 6'7", 260. Okay. Okay. You know, I think he'd put up a good fight. Caught my wife looking at the side of my head one time, and I knew what she was thinking. I knew it was one of those looks where she was like, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> Let's talk why, why fighting. How'd you start? I started in swimming. I swam. Yeah. Holy shit, time out. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's where my natural body frame comes from. If you look at, let me show them my back. Look at this swimmer's back. <laughs> Rhonda, look at my back. It's That's from the butterfly. Oh my God, I hated you. the butterfly. What was your problem? I was really good at the freestyle, but I like the breaststroke the best. Oh, you like the breaststroke. Mm-hmm, it's most relaxing. The breaststroke. Yeah, but I hated swimming. You didn't like swimming? Oh, it was boring. How long yeah. did you do it? I did it from when I was six to 10. And then uh, my mom, we moved from North Dakota back to LA, where she trained back in the 80s okay. in judo. So my mom went to go visit all of her old teammates, and they had all like opened up judo clubs of their own. And so okay. I went to go try it out, and I just went with her, and one of the coaches was making fun of me, and he's like, oh, it's a lot more fun than swimming, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Oh like, my God. I was in love with it. I had a lot of trouble speaking as a kid. Okay. I had a speech disorder called apoxia. Mm -hmm. So I learned to like communicate physically, and okay. I was really shy with other kids. And so judo made me like interact with another kid and to be able to express myself when I couldn't, you know, with words. I think that's what I hated about swimming is your mind would wander. And at that age, you know, my, my dad had just died and stuff like okay. that. So I didn't want my mind to be wandering too okay. much. Ooh. Uh yeah, it's fucking cold. <laughs> it's cold. That's why I said we should sit our asses on the back yeah. for a second, but you just wanted to get in. How many power bombs you take this week? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need this. Did you have a friend? Was it just you oh, and your mother? I think it was, it was really me and my mom and I think that was like the best kind of memories that I have from those days mm -hmm. was me and her being in the car. We would have like four hours, three times a week. Talks. Just to talk in the car. Those conversations are so important. It all clicks at a certain age. You go, damn, man, I, I not only value that, I can't wait to have those moments with my child. Is this something that you want your child to partake in as well? Ooh. I would never try to make my kids fight, mm -hmm. but I would want them to always know how to fight. Is there any way that I can get you to train my daughter? My daughter sucks. <laughs> I say, honey, you need to learn some kind of self-defense. My daughter says, why, dad? All I gotta do is go, stranger! <laughs> and she said, run. That's what my daughter thinks. Bring her on out to Browsy Acres. Got a yeah. wrestling ring in the backyard. Well, show my daughter something. My daughter don't wanna listen to me for <laughs> shit. When did you realize that you were good? When I was swimming when I was a kid, my dad always told me that I was gonna go win the Olympics in swimming. I was mm -hmm. gonna be a president and I was gonna do all these great things. Wow. So I just assumed that's what you like went out to do things for. Mm -hmm. So when I switched from swimming to judo, I just assumed like, oh, I'm gonna win the Olympics in this now. Holy shit. Like that was- Some mindset. Yeah. yeah. So at 16, I went to the Pan American Games and I won the Pan American Games at 16 years old. And then the Olympic trials was in June and I won the Olympic trials. Jesus. And then that August was my first Olympics. You got it, you're in the Olympics. So what's the mindset now at this well, point? Well, I kind of got screwed over. Who did it? 
Who Ooh, did it? Who is the referee? So it wasn't the girl's fault. I was about to get out the tub. I'm yeah. still mad about it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but it's okay. So we say screwed over. What 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 happened? Well, Why? the score system is if you throw someone on your back, you win. Okay. I threw the girl flat on her back, and then the referee and the two judges pretended like it didn't happen. They missed it. No, they, they ignored it. <laughs> they ignored it. Why do you think that it was ignored? Because I was completely unknown person from a country that wasn't very good at judo, mm. and um, I had mm. no business being there or beating mm. that person. <laughs> That's what I call bullshit. That's the bullshit bell. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, after the first Olympics and I didn't medal, I went to another Olympics. Okay. I was 21 and I got a bronze. I realized that I was in my 20s with no education and no work experience, Olympic medal, um, but no, I mean, what was I gonna do with my life? All the only thing that, that judo medal helped me get was it helped me get a job as a cocktail waitress in Crenshaw because I knew I was tough. Wow. I did, I'd been spent my whole life like building my body up to do all these great things and I was miserable. So I spent a whole year just drinking and partying and all this stuff. And maybe this is what I'm missing out on. I had big time FOMO. Was, big time what? FOMO? FOMO. What is that? What Fear is of that? missing out? Fear of missing out. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Uh, I was like, wait, what, did I not know what that is? <laughs> you know what FOMO was, Bam Bam? I bet you got fucking FOMO. <laughs> Every time I see you, you goddamn fomo in. Okay, so I would watch, you know, fights on the screen at the bars and stuff like that. And now I'd break down the fights, be like, this person should have done that. Da, da, da. He'd be like, oh man, you would kill all these girls you wanted to do if you wanted to fight. And I'd be like, hell yeah, like I should do it. And they're like, no, don't do it. First, you're gonna get hit. Like, don't get hit. You're too pretty to get hit. And second of all, there's no money in it. And I told my mom, and she was like, that's the stupidest fucking idea I ever heard in my life. So I told her, I was like, just give me a year before you disown me. Give me a year to make this work. If you don't like it, then uh, at the time, the Coast Guard uh, offered me uh, to come and be a rescue swimmer. You know, it was the same thing for me in comedy. I asked my mom, I said, yo, look, give me a year to go through with this idea that may not seem conventional or traditional. What I was hearing was what? Comedy, that you're not gonna make no money. There is no future in that. What, what the fuck do you plan on doing? What we chose to do is very risky. And so I was trained three times a day, driving to the valley twice a day, like working three jobs. Doing it. Oh, what the fuck are you job. doing? You don't hear us talking about shit. You don't have any control over this. It's an emotional moment, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you wanna fuck with me while I got Rhonda here? <laughs> I have a kick both of your ass. Do it again. Do it. Do it so I can knock you at Rhonda, grab me! <laughs> Stop it! Fuck it! Don't you grab no more ice. Don't don't mind them. So right now, fuck Rhonda. You got you're yeah. going to the UFC. Going to the UFC. Rhonda Rousey is a star. The people that said that there was no money, now look at Rhonda fucking raking in money. How does that make you feel? Vindicated. There you go. Was the right word. Breaking news here on Cold as Balls. Vindicated is the correct word. <laughs> I fucking love it. Okay, so at that point, you know, you're a fucking huge star. The other huge star there is Connor. At the yeah. Time, correct? Connor. Shouts out to Connor McGregor. Love uh, you, Connor. And the light that's now shining on UFC is a different light because of the stars that are going along with it. You're fitting the definition of a fucking star. You shut that's naysayers up. So the warrior around the Rousey has found herself in a new place of success. You're in the WWE now. <laughs> Give me the goal. Give me the goal and the end game with the WWE. The goal, the goal is not to be champion. And Rowdy Rowdy Piper's son taught me a very important lesson. Okay. And he said that it, it doesn't matter. The belts don't matter. Okay. And it's about the stories and the storytelling. And I, I just, I really want, like the WWE and the women's division will be better off because I was there. I wanna be a catalyst and I wanna push everything forward and I want people to thank me for being there. I'm gonna tell you what I've noticed, okay? Before we wrap up. First things first, I forgot to tell the world that Rhonda has a donkey. <laughs> a donkey. I don't wanna dig into it, I just want y'all to know she has a donkey. What I've noticed is that your story is such a fucking dope story. Know that you got people that are fucking rooting for you. I'm one of those people and I'm glad that you came on my show today. Now look, for you, for you, cause you think I'm a bitch, I'm gonna fucking put my shoulders in. All right, okay. here we go. Hmm? Never before. Never before. Ben, ben what are you doing? Why do you have a belt? You want me to, want me to put the belt on? Bam, this is a great moment, actually. 
Okay, you wanna act as your manager right now. Okay, okay, yeah. Bam Bam X, you just stay. I'm the wrestler right now, and I'm gonna do like a wrestling thing, and then you put it on, and then you do one to take us out. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> when I get in the ring, Everybody knows that my hands aren't regular hands. And when I plant my hands on you, you best believe that they're going to grow. And they're going to grow in the right direction. I'm talking about the direction of taking your air and taking it out your body and making you breathe from your butt. And that's not a fart. That's called a poop. I'm known for squeezing poops out of people's butts. Is that not right? Billy Big Bob, I'm a poop squeezing son of a bitch. So you ask yourself when you step in a ring with me if you got gas. And if you do, then that mean I'm a Squeeze it out your ass. Yeah! <laughs> How's that? You gotta do a promo. I mean, the I way care. I do a promo, it kind of is like, you think I'm gonna kill you. Look like you a fan, okay? So, so her promo can work. Help her with the belt! You see her struggling? All right. This is the reality era. I'm just saying, you don't want to be part of my promo segments. Are okay. you sure well, you want to be part well, of it? Well, maybe I should step out. Here's how my promos go. Oh, shit! Right Get out of the top! No! Out of the top! Get out of the top! Get out of the top! Wait a minute! You brought me out of the way, okay. world! Okay. I live 70 miles from here! You know how many power bombs I took this week, Kevin? I'm scared. Oh, Kevin! Bam, bam. This is plastic! Bam, bam, bam. I'm insulted! Get the gun! Ah! Oh, God! You two motherfuckers are fired. You best believe you ain't got a job. Here, no, get, your, get your hands off of me. You're too late. Get off me. Get your fucking hands off of me. Get the fuck off of me. Get your hands off of me. Don't you touch me. Get the fuck off. Ah! White hands. Take it. Ah. 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 Ah.